Welcome everyone to What to Watch Live, the show where we discuss the best in TV and entertainment this week. My name is David, and today I am joined by my fellow Xfinity editors, the Courtney and Chloe to my Kim Kardashian. It's Audrey and Scott. Who's who? I want to know who's who. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to say I'm Kim, but and I don't want to say who's Courtney or Chloe. You can. Scott, can you're probably Chloe? more of a kid. You can be Chloe. I'll be Courtney. Scott can be Kim. <laughs> I'm like, you better buy. I'm okay. so ready to hit this button, David. <laughs> I like that. I mean, at least I didn't call you Rob, which is what I had originally written down. But Oh. <gasps> okay, yeah. That's fine. I'll take Shame. it. I'll take it. <laughs> How is everyone? Happy New Year. First show back. Yeah. Good. Yeah. You know? Ready to rock the and roll. Here yeah. we are. So in addition to being live right now on X1 and Flex, we're also live on Twitter. Hello, Twitter. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, and we are kicking off 2022 with a show dedicated entirely to Peacock, uh, including a look at some of the hit shows and specials coming up this month, uh, as well as a visit by our special guests, Josh Gad and Isla Fisher. We are so excited for that. So without further ado, let's kick things off within the news. <laughs> Yesterday, Peacock dropped the first full-length trailer for its dramatic reimagining of the iconic Fresh Prince of Bel-Air sitcom, simply titled Bel-Air. Uh, executive produced by Will Smith, the series stars Philadelphia native and TV newcomer Jabari Banks as the famous teen who got in one little fight before his mom got scared and said, you're moving with your auntie and uncle in Bel Air. Let's take a look at the trailer. Damn! Jeffrey Thompson, house manager. Will! I'll be there. <laughs> Ten years is a long time. Let me show you around. Where them dimes at? Hillary! Well, let's go find you something fit for a friend. What do you think? I made you look. Yo, Uncle Phil. I'm glad you're safe. We'll talk later. Cousin Bruno! Yo! Is this really baby Ashley? You're a long way from home, Mom. Oh, too. How you, How you been? been? You know, <laughs> thriving. I hope uh, one day we can talk about why you're really here. So I don't know if you all remember, but like this whole series was born out of a mock trailer. Like it was yeah. a fake trailer created by filmmaker Morgan Cooper in 2019. It was released on YouTube and there was such a massive response to that trailer, which was a, a dramatic retelling of uh, Fresh Prince um, that Will Smith teamed up with Cooper uh, and some of the original producers of Fresh Prince to produce this series. and. Frankly, it looks really good. It does. It looks awesome. Um, I'm very excited. Um, it's very different, obviously. I love, you mentioned, like, TV newcomer who's playing Will. I love the fact that basically everyone, except maybe one or two people, are really newcomers to this. And I like that it's faces we haven't seen before. Um, so I think that's going to be really cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm super interested to see what they do. I mean... <laughs> It's kind of funny because they, they've basically taken the plot from the theme song, like of the original series, right? Like, and then just built out this world from that rather than, or at least that's what it feels like to me, rather than kind of like piggybacking. It is truly like a reimagination rather than this sort of like rehashing of this, but with a, a darker tone. So keen to see what that's all about. But also like Carlton looks way too cool. Like he so does. Cool. Under, I know. That was one like, of my points. <laughs> Do we that think he's going to do the dance? Too. Like, come on. No like, way. I don't know. He's not doing bring that it dance. Back. <laughs> I hope. Maybe I like really, a cool kid. TikTok version. Yeah, I really like, I'm really interested in seeing what they do with Jeffrey in this. Because like, obviously everyone loved Jeffrey. But in this, he feels like, almost like a, like an Alfred type butler to like, Will Smith's Batman. Like, he just seems like so much wiser. And, you know, he's got the accent and everything. I, I don't know. I I was really into it, and certainly, like uh, you know, Uncle Phil like was very stern, but he he seemed very lovable. And the the Uncle Phil in this seems a little more scary. 
Yeah, he seems like a villain, yeah. almost. Yeah, the other thing that I was watching it, I'm like, everyone seems so young. And I was like, oh, that's because I'm old and they were young when <laughs> I watched this show. <laughs> um, wow. But I think it's going to be really good. Like, the music well, seems really good. I know, like, the fashion is probably going to be great. Um, it is, like, a reimagining for current day. So super curious to see where this goes. I don't remember seeing... Uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff in the in the trailer for this, not the Me actual either. DJ, but J Jazz. I guess they called him in the show. I didn't remember seeing because they really made a point of being like, "Oh, hi Ashley and hi Carlton." <laughs> like everyone popped out. Where's Jazz? I don't know. I guess I we'll see. Know. I don't have an answer. Yeah, you'll find yeah. out when <laughs> Bel Air premieres <laughs> Super Bowl Sunday, February thirteenth on. Peacock. Uh, next up, we'll jump into 2022 with some goals, some Peacock goals, in a segment called Collections Corner. Let's face it, making New Year's resolutions is a miserable experience, and keeping those resolutions is even harder. I mean, is anyone still doing dry January at this point? I we're not even two weeks in. No, I re really Audrey, good luck to you. seriously. Good luck. No, <laughs> good luck to boo. you. Boo, boo. But, <laughs> but Audrey is here to tell us how you can make and keep your New Year's resolutions without ever leaving the couch. Audrey, that's right, David. Mm -hmm. Um, in 2022, you can make all of your New Year's resolutions peacock goals. So, we created this destination that does just that. So you can travel somewhere new with their Housewives of Miami. You can free your mind with the Matrix. You can work smarter, not harder with the office and so much more. And like David said, all of this can be done without leaving your couch, which is, you know, just the best. Um, so as you scroll through this destination, you'll see all of these different tiles. You can click on whatever one speaks to you. If you're looking for a soulmate, maybe Paris in love. As you go down, you'll see even more options. Um, Yellowstone is always a favorite. And then if you're just looking for something based on your, you know, go-to tastes, if you want a comedy or a drama um, or reality TV, we've got it all. There's so much more. There's obviously movies. You can just launch right into the app and see what you're looking for. But um, hashtag Peacock Goals, say Peacock Goals into your voice remote, and you will just be able to satisfy all of your resolutions without all the heavy lifting. Just a click of the button. And that's Peacock Goals. <laughs> that is peacock goals yeah i'm i'm particularly interested in the work smarter not harder goal um particularly because i see that like the associated show with that is the office and just on the first of the year peacock released season four of the office super fan episodes um, which are really, really incredible. If you're an Office fan out there and you and you don't know about this, um, Peacock has uh, extended versions of all of, I think now up to season four, one through four, I believe, um, of The Office. And they're like recut with scenes that have never been released before or had been released, but now they're inserted into the episode. They're extended episodes, basically. Um, and it's like, you know, you couldn't imagine when the office ended that you could go back and find more office. It's like, oh, the office is done. Like there will never be more office. Well, now there's like more office because it's these things you've never seen before. And season four, which they just released includes some amazing episodes like dinner party and fun run and goodbye, Toby. So like dinner party is one of the greatest TV episodes of all time. And now there's more of it. So like, that's just crazy to me. So that's, I'm going to work harder or work smarter, not harder and watch The Office. Love it. What about you, Scott? Um, there are two that sort of, you know, talked to me when I saw your destination. Um, find your soulmate. Uh, I love Paris, obviously. Paris and Love is a fantastic television show. Um, it started off a little rough, in my opinion. It felt a little bit like forced in like the reality world, but actually, if you've stuck with it, it really does give you an insight into her 
crazy world and like all the pressure that she's under and like how she's managed to pull this wedding together, which obviously like she had planned from like way long ago. And there's a little bit of added drama, at, you know, in this, but you get a, a new side of Kathy Hilton, that's for sure. And that's kind of cool to see because yeah. we all love her from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Um, but also don't don't answer your phone. So, I mean, I'm probably going to get dragged by David for this one because <laughs> I, I don't answer my phone already. But New Year, same me. That's how I'm feeling it. Um, and I love that this is paired with Scream because, like, the new Scream is coming out. And I'm so excited about it. Can't wait to see it this weekend. Um, but obviously, I want to revisit all of the original Screams. So who doesn't want to not answer their phone? And Unless it's Ghostface, because then actually I probably would want to answer it and just, just you know, talk his ear off a little bit, find out what he's you know, doing, what he's been doing over the pandemic. It's like a whole thing. Wait, is Ghostface the name of the Scream character? Yeah. You yeah. didn't know that? Oh, I, I don't know. I guess I thought it was like Scream Face. <laughs> Ghostface. <laughs> <No>. Scream Face. <laughs> terrifying. Um, yeah, I think they originally yeah, called it sense. something else in the script. Um, but yeah, they ultimately landed on Ghostface. Um, yeah. How did you not know that, Audrey? Okay. Wow. I don't know. I'm going to stick that. with Screamface you know. because I find that. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Ooh, Wait, full song. That's, no, that's not the right song. You just did the, you did no. the song from the end of the Simpsons episodes. Dun, 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 no. dun, 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 oh, dun. wait. Isn't that the dun, same thing? Dun, 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 dun. That's oh whatever. <laughs> you know what? Look, Reading we're all just doing things this episode. <laughs> I do love that you did the end. I know, of the and Simpsons now I've got that stupid like doo -doo 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 -doo, that little like thing after the Simpsons. Oh, God, this is all your fault, David. Now I've got all these stupid <laughs> things in my head. How is this my fault, Audrey? Are you right. I'll bring us back. Your inner cowboy. <laughs> oh man, I should because I am actually behind on Yellowstone. I know you're gonna be mad at me for that. Um, but I'm actually going to go with travel somewhere new because I'm dying to go on a real vacation with COVID. I think we've all been trapped. Um, and now I can to Miami with the Real Housewives. Um, and I've actually watched four episodes. And for those of you who don't know, this originally was on Bravo. There were three seasons. It went away for several years. So now it's back on Peacock. Um, with a few OG cast members and then a few new faces. And it does not disappoint if you love a Housewives. So that's what I'm doing. I'm traveling to Miami from my sofa. I'm also, I will not drag you for not watching Yellowstone because I have not watched the new season either. But because like, really? I haven't because there are shows that I love that I know I'm gonna watch. Doesn't matter if I watch them now, next week, three years from now, like whatever, I'm gonna watch the new season of Yellowstone. Same with Succession, but there's some stuff that if I don't watch it right now, I might not like Vigil on Peacock, <laughs> Vigil. Uh, if I don't watch it right now, I'll probably get behind. So like I started watching Vigil so I can like get that and like, it's great but I just know myself. So I know if I don't watch it now, I'm not going to get to it. Yellowstone will always that's, be there. That's fair. And Vigil yeah. is great. Yeah. It is. Watch Vigil. It's awesome. <laughs> if you're looking for something crimey and mystery and like in a submarine, if you're really hankering for that submarine drama, <laughs> Vigil's the one for you. Um, if you're torn so between you, submarine dramas yes. and you're not sure which one to pick. If you only watch one submarine drama <laughs> in 2022, make it vigil. Wow. Yes, but it really um, is great. It is good. Um, you can check out Audrey's full collection and set some attainable TV resolutions for yourself by saying peacock goals into your voice remote. Next up, I see a bad moon arising in the brand new installment of Hangouts. This week, Peacock drops a brand new dramatic comedy starring Josh Gad and Isla Fisher entitled Wolf Like Me and our very own Audrey had a chance to sit down with both stars for a new episode of Xfinity Hangouts. Audrey, how did it go? Um, it was super fun. They're very wonderful humans. Um, and we'll show the clip and then we'll come back and talk about it a little bit. 
Very easy to be in your company, you know that? Yeah, it's been a while for me, too. Well, why did you run away from me? I'm a complicated person. It's got baggage. After the accident, when I was scared, you said that you'd been there, too. Oh, I have. A bunch of times. My life is a mess. Messy is good. Messy I've never shared this with anyone before. One of the themes about Wolf Like Me seems to be like new beginnings. So I'm wondering with that in mind, if you can share with me a 2022 New Year's resolution or goal for both yourselves as people and your characters, Gary and Mary in the show. (laughs) What an interesting question (laughs) off the bat for Isla. Okay, Mary's goals moving forward would be to make herself even more vulnerable and uh, to kind of put some of her guards down in her relationship with Gary. Um, As you know, it's a love story. And I think the characters come into this dynamic with a lot of baggage. So ideally, I think moving forward, that would be Mary's, um, Mary's dream. And for Isla, I'm just really, you know, I'm ironing out like some Moroccan fish dishes, which I started to nail at the end of last year and haven't quite, you know, got them there. So I'm, I'm all about cooking. Yeah, um, I think for Gary, it would be uh, probably invest in a new car. His car goes through a lot of uh, trauma in the series. Uh, And also, uh, you know, figure out how he can really connect with his daughter in a way that will uh, bring her joy and allow her to be free. And then for Josh, I'm rocking out a couple of fish dishes (laughs) right now. What a coincidence, Um, guys. Yeah. (laughs) I love fish and cooking fish. So that's my 2022 He's resolution. Just me. He's much what? You said to that too. Out. I checked that. Sorry. That's really amazing. in a, really in a sizzling fish. <laughs> no, I'm not sizzling them. That's not helping. I'm like, I'm like, what do you have a special fish dish? Like what is your I mean I'm experimenting with some Asian flavors, but at the moment, um I do a <laughs> This is not going to help you watch our show. Guys, our show. I think it is helping. Let let me, let me tell you something. I think, um, I think the world connects with cooking fish. And I think that this is a way to win them over. Um, I love, I love cooking salmon. I'm a, I'm a salmon guy. Do you like to bake? Would you like to boil? Would you like to I like, well, I like like it when it's cooked. He likes to slice it raw. Yeah. I like it when it's just a cooked salmon. Yeah. And we're back. (laughs) Yeah, so. (laughs) Sorry, I was looking at this poster because it's so creepy. Um, So obviously, (laughs) those two are really fun together. The show is interesting, right? So it's like a six-part series. Everything I've read said it was like genre bending, and it kind of is, right? Like, I would call it romantic horror dramedy because there are elements of a horror movie or show that you would come to know um there are comedic parts there's actually a lot of physical comedy which was like my favorite part there's a ton of isla fisher's character like just booking like she'll be talking and she gets freaked out and she's just like off gone or she'll crash into someone like carrying a tray of like wine glasses and everything crashes so like there is that aspect i think we know both of these um actors as little pretty like heavy subject matter um so i appreciate that physical comedy part um but it's cool it's set in australia even though both of them have american they're american in the show even though isla fisher is actually australian (laughs) um so that's interesting um but i don't want to give too much away because it is only six um episodes and there are twists and turns um but it's worth it it's a really different kind of show and it's not what you're expecting um, so I would say dig in and I don't know if David and Scott, if you have any thoughts or feelings after that interview or watching the trailer, but it's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, I would, I'd like to know what percentage of this show is about fish. Uh, mm. <laughs> Zero. Zero percent. <laughs> so um, no, I, I, I know nothing. super fun. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, David. Sorry. No, no, no. I, 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 I just, I, I, <laughs> I know nothing about this show beyond what I've seen in the trailer and what I've seen in Audrey's interview. I assume she's a wolf. I assume she is secretly some sort of werewolf. Do you assume that? 
Maybe. I, I, I do, not. but I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, yeah. and you take like little clues, like he's looking through the window of the door there and the, and the trailer. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they showed that part of the trailer. It looks like there's scratches. So um, so I, I don't know if like what the deal is with the daughter. Maybe she's like, does she have like some, is, is the daughter a werewolf too? I, I have no clue, but I, I'm interested. Yeah. Audrey, when you said she books it, what do you mean? Like she just runs away or is it like oh, yeah. you know, she turns into a yeah. werewolf and like runs away? Is it basically like the wolf equivalent of bat from what we do in the shadows? <laughs> because that would be amazing. Wolf. Mm. <laughs> she does not. <laughs> no, as a human um, woman, she runs away from situations. Like she gets okay. very uncomfortable and freaked out. And instead of just like saying, you know, like, I think I'm going to go home. She just straight gets up and runs as fast as she can in whatever direction she chooses to go in. Um, so it's interesting. Take What do you think she's running from or to? Tune in to find out. Yeah. <laughs> just assume she just feels the wolfness coming on and just has to like get away or she hears a squeaky toy and is trying to run to wherever <laughs> it is. Or, or she but left it's... the iron on. <laughs> 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 But That's it's always from my the fear. Same producers <laughs> of uh, Big Little Lies and Nine Perfect Strangers. So, like, you imagine it's got a pretty good like production pedigree behind it. Um, yeah. So, like, all signs point to like something pretty good. I mean, you watched the first few episodes, right, Audrey? I did. Yeah, it does start a little slow. Like, you have to stay invested. I think don't like be waiting for some huge payoff in the first two episodes. But after the first two episodes, it really does pick up, and you do get really invested in these characters because of the situation that they're in. And Josh Gad is actually a widow. Isla Fisher's character is a single woman. They, their worlds collide, um, I will say, and they keep running into each other. Um, and then you find out why. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, if you're looking for something like pretty short, a little quirky, a little dark, um, with two very talented actors who are also very lovely human beings i would say wolf like me is for you um and that will be available on peacock on the 13th, 13th. yeah, yeah. <laughs> two two days you know, the vibe of it kind of reminds me of dead to me on netflix like also mm-hmm. the kind of comedy but like dark dark as well and also car yeah. accidents i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's actually a good comparison. I would say it does have a similar vibe um, to Dead to Me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, if anyone out there is watching Yellow Jackets, you know what it's like to wait a long time, what a slow a slow burn looks like. You're going to so... start a fight here, <laughs> David. Mm. <laughs> I, I love Yellow Jackets, but like we're like, we all do. So it's yeah. in. And, uh, and like, we have more questions what? than answers. I God just, is I mean, I'm in it. Christina Ricci, just everything. I will sit there and watch her be that crazy, like all day long. I don't care what she's talking about. Like literally, there could be no plot. I would just sit there and watch her act like that because it's amazing. She's so good. I guarantee you, we are not going to get an answer in this finale. Where it's going to end, and we're not going to know. It's just going to leave us. Like, yeah. I do think we should have a separate show on that show because I have a lot of <laughs> questions. Um, mainly Juliet Lewis's wardrobe. Episode. Like, where do you buy the clothes that Juliet Lewis wears? Like, I couldn't even tell I you. I bet you she owns those clothes. Like, I bet that's <laughs> Julia, uh, Juliet Lewis's <laughs> actual outfit. 9,000%. She's also doing theory. her own hair and makeup. It's all her. <laughs> it's just her. She's just playing herself. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if, if you <laughs> don't mind a slow burn like that, apparently you will love uh, Wolf Like Me. And yep. it premieres in just two days, this Thursday, January 13th. Just say Wolf Like Me or Peacock into your voice remote, and you can watch the rest of Audrey's interview with Josh and Isla on Xfinity's YouTube channel starting tomorrow. And next up, Grab your beakers and your Bunsen burners because we're cooking up some TV formulas in a segment called, If You Like, Then. (laughs) If you're a fan of Parks and Rec, how would you describe that show to someone who's never seen it? 
You might say it's something like The Office meets The West Wing. Sure, that's a little bit of a stretch, but that's the general concept behind something we call TV formulas. If you like these two shows, you might like this third show. And Audrey has cooked up five TV formulas to describe new and upcoming shows on Peacock that you might enjoy. So Audrey, what do you have for us here? Sure, I think we're gonna start with everyone's favorite submarine drama, Vigil. <laughs> <laughs> On I Peacock. spoiled it. So, <laughs> <laughs> if you like NCIS um, and you like Sequest, perhaps you will like Vigil because it is underwater and there is crime. <laughs> um, missed opportunity and, to have Deep Blue Sea here. Just saying. Like, I what considered is it. it. <laughs> that was a consideration. Um, I don't know what kind of a formula it is like plus plus times or divided by equals, but we could have done that. <laughs> um, but yeah, like David and I mentioned, Vigil is like a Scottish slash British um, drama on Peacock where there is a crime committed on a submarine and a police officer is sent underwater onto the submarine, like helicoptered in. It's like very gives me the heebie-jeebies. Um, and she goes on board and she's investigating and there's lots of like twists and turns and who's a good guy, who's a bad guy, um, what's going on. And then she has a partner on the police force who's like sending her secret coded messages because they're like trying to crack the case both on land and in sea. Um, and it's very interesting. I just stumbled on it and really liked the submarine aspect, which sounds so weird. But I think just because there aren't a lot of submarine shows and it was very interesting, like that dynamic and like all the chambers and the missile decks. And I don't know, I thought it was cool to say. Um, but yeah, if you like those, you might like Vigil. Do you Can not I think it feels say... claustrophobic? Like I, and so also claustrophobic. Audrey, have, you ever, have you ever chartered a submarine? <laughs> <laughs> Negative. Yes. No, but maybe you as a charter of yachts would charter a submarine. No. I'm also so just confused the, with like why they brought in a cop here. Like, isn't there naval law like where they have like their own, I, whatever you call it, like police force or thing for like yeah this, yeah for boat there stuff. Is. <laughs> boat stuff, yes. But like they might be baddies too, so they had to bring in an outsider. <laughs> yeah, well, the way they described it in the show was that it happened technically in like British waters, so they had to bring in someone from from Great Britain to like to like study it or whatever. I forget the yeah. logic, but like that was why they did it. And I was so interested. I don't know if it's factually based at all, but how she got into the submarine. I was so crazy. More interested about her being helicoptered into that and seeing it like come up to surface and how they got her on there. That was the most interesting part to me. And I'm like, I wonder if that's real. Don't, yeah, they Straight usually, the well, of. I mean, at least from media that I've seen it, doesn't it just like surface to like a little bit, all the water comes off the top and then they open up a hatch and like they just drop right in, right? That's exactly what happened. Yeah, basically, yeah. yeah but it was yeah. still really interesting As to someone me who's some chartered reason. submarines before, I can tell you that <laughs> <laughs> if you're boarding from the middle of the ocean, yeah. that's exactly how it happens. <laughs> It's it's also worth mentioning that Vigil's from the same people who do Line of Duty and Bodyguard. Um, if you like really love those, I think most of us really loved at least Bodyguard and Line of Duty. So um, yeah, it's like the same vibe as those shows. Yeah. Um, what so else yeah, you got? Vigil. Uh, next, I think we have, if you like The Simple Life and Say Yes to the Dress, you might love anyone. Paris, in, Paris love. in love. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think you guys can guess here. So Paris Hilton starred in The Simple Life. Um, she's planning a wedding. So we threw in a little like dress shopping vibe and you get Paris in love. Um, Scott talked about this a little bit already. It's like her and her fiance Carter's like journey to the aisle. Um, some probably real, some probably very much over the top. Um, but you do get like a good look and like, I knew nothing about him going in. That was actually the most interesting part to me. Like I didn't know who he was. Like you could have told me anything and I would have been like, oh, okay. 
Um, so getting to see who he was and learning about him and like their dynamic was very um, interesting to me. Yeah, I think it's really interesting to see her like perfectionist like vibes in action, like the moment when she was performing or DJing his uh, Carter's sister's wedding or something. And she was like freaking out because she couldn't do a sound check beforehand. And like all of the pressure that she felt to like be perfect because at any time someone could pull out a camera and be like, haha, look at her. She doesn't know what she's doing. Like she has to be like on all the time. Like, so it's something, it's really cool to see that side of her and just kind of, you see, you can actually like hear and see when she like drops her character that she normally puts on and like here, I mean, we've talked about this before on the show. Yeah. Like we, David and I have gone into this like in detail, just talking about from the times that we've interviewed her. So yeah, love this show. I can't wait to see where it ends up. Um, you know, we're kind of wrapping it up soon, I think, right? We're uh, episode eight or nine now, so yeah stick with it it's worth left. it i promise yeah david no thoughts on paris i i got nothing i got nothing there. got nothing great all right moving on <laughs> um wow if, if you like the real housewives of orange county and courtney and chloe take miami which like wow what a gem that was and so long ago and they look so different um you might love the real housewives of miami um which i talked about just came back. I think we're on the fifth episode now. Um, Bravo had the first three seasons. Peacock is bringing this back now for season four as an original. Um, there is lots of spicy drama, as you would imagine. The houses are insane. The fashion is insane. All of the things that you would expect from a Housewives franchise. Um, but the characters are interesting. There's um, a new character named Dr. Nicole, and she's an anesthesiologist. And a mom of a toddler. So I feel like they're like branching out with their casting, which is nice to see. Um, and yeah, I, as I said, I've watched all of the episodes so far. I feel like Scott would probably get into this. David again is going to be like, I have nothing to say on this one, but <laughs> Scott loves a housewife situation. So he should check yeah, it out. Yeah, I'm a, a new a new housewife fan, but yeah, I haven't seen this one yet, but it sounds like vibes that I could jam on. So I'm here. Yeah. Sign me up. Let's go. And you'll feel like you're on vacation, which who I mean, want that? needed, honestly. Yeah, for <laughs> real. Um, okay. So next, um, everyone can probably guess this one. If you smash together MacGyver and SNL, you will get McGruber. McGrubber. I always want to say McGrubber, and I know that's wrong. <laughs> McGruber. Um, so Ew, people McGrubber. love. I, know. <laughs> I have yellow jackets like grubs on my mind. Um, mm. People. Um, this the McGruber movie like has such a cult following, and I was actually surprised that it took this long to bring it to TV form. I feel like usually those things um, happen pretty quickly. Um, so this one's been in the works for a while. Um, so this debuted on Peacock right around Christmas time um, and is super fun. So I think, again, if you're just looking for some layback, just watch something fun, easy, like really silly and over the top, um, McGruber is the one for you. Um, and if David had anything to say at any time, maybe this is it. Yeah, <laughs> no. this would be it. Um, I actually, I, I interviewed uh, Will Forte um, well, a couple times, but the first time I interviewed him was for a dramatic movie he did called Nebraska several years ago. And even when I talked to him then, he said they were working on a McGruber TV series. And that was years and years and years ago. So it's been a long time coming. Um, it's really fun to see like Ryan Philippi or Philippe, but I already, I already say his name, and Kristen Wiig step back into these roles um, from that movie because like they've gone on to do oh so many other things since then, but they've all come back for this series. And it's it is like classic MacGruber. He's like crude and like just kind of an idiot and uh, like nude a lot for some reason, but. Um, it's 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 great. It's a lot of fun. If you like MacGruber and like that vibe, like don't think this is going to be a serious like serious at all. It's ridiculous and like that's what it is. So go in with that mindset. 
Yeah, it's not a dramatic retelling of the movie. It is just the movie in TV form. (laughs) Um, But I will say, like, huge talent also, like Kristen Wiig and, like, Ryan Phillippe, like, big names that are, you know, on Peacock in the series, which is... Yeah, and Billy Zane. Billy Zane plays the villain, and I love how, like, this series, like, Val Kilmer played the villain in the movie, and he hadn't done, like, something, really something like that for for a while, and hasn't really done much since, but like Billy Zane, when was the last time you thought about our, our boy Billy? Um, Titanic. Here he is, resur- resurrected. Yeah. I once asked Billy Zane if a real man really does make his own luck, referencing one of his famous lines from Titanic. And he gave me like a super serious answer. I'm like, I was just kidding, dude. Aww. <laughs> really? I mean, I was serious, but I thought he was going to have fun with it. And he didn't. But he was a nice guy anyway. Billy Zane's a nice guy. But anyway. Way to drag so Billy Zane all over this. Like... <laughs> so, sorry, Billy Zane. Imagine Billy Zane's watching on Twitter right now like, <laughs> I knew it was a joke. It's David. Ah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, okay, and our next and our last equation we have here is if you like Lip Sync Battle and The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, you will also probably enjoy <laughs> That's My Jam. Um, that was actually really good, Audrey. Wow. It was. <laughs> really? Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. it sounded good. Um, it sounded I, didn't, I didn't practice at all. <laughs> I just have, I always have a harmonica and a maraca next to my computer in case like the moment arises and um, it just happened to work. Um, so this show is super fun. I think we've all watched this and it's, you know, similar to like segments that Jimmy's done on his show where he pulls his celebrity friends and guests in and makes them play silly musical games, guessing games. Um, and it's really just that in a whole show form and it's super fun. Um, so Scott, you watch this, David, you've watched it. I did. I've watched Thoughts? a couple episodes of this now and I really enjoyed it. Um, I felt like the the first episode with the voice judges was felt a little bit more forced than like the second episode, which was like a little bit more organic and fun. And um, But it's also made me feel really old because like Ariana Grande not knowing like some of the answers to these questions. And I was just <laughs> like, how does she not? She doesn't know, like, how old am I? I know, but- like, isn't she, like, how old is she? Like, what, what is happening right now? <laughs> but, yeah, it's fun. It's cool. And, I mean, we love a, a music-themed television show. And anything that's, like, gamified, sign me up. Let's do it. Yeah. And I love that it's a mix of, like, actual musicians and then not musicians. Like, Joseph Gordon-Levitt just, like, comes in and he's, like, playing a tuba and he's, like, actually kind of good. Um, so he that, is pretty musical, like. though, right? Oh, is he it? is, yeah. yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> Throws the maraca. <laughs> well, maybe but I, there's I, other I, more I, musical people. Yeah, but I like that because he's not like you don't think of him as a musician. So you do get to see like a different side. And I think we all like appreciate any time when you get like an insight into like the personality of a celebrity beyond what they're known for. Um, And that's what like, that's what I've always like, I, I agree with you a little bit on that first episode, Scott, but I just love seeing Ariana Grande in anything because she's so like multi talented in like music and like so far beyond that so i love seeing like those various sides and just seeing like jimmy like brings out the best in these uh stars and makes them feel comfortable to like just be kind of goofy so i appreciate that yeah also like what a fun job like that's your job jimmy fallon to like come up with these like fun game shows and like play silly instruments with famous people bravo that's all bravo very very lucky of him (laughs) Yeah. Well, uh, you can check out all of the shows that we just talked about by saying what to watch into your voice remote. You'll be able to see all those shows or just go to Peacock. Just say Peacock into your voice remote as well. And before we go, as always, it is time to organize your TV watch list with a segment called Plan Ahead. (laughs) 
This week, we're giving you a look ahead at some of the best Peacock has to offer in the coming month, starting with a very exciting event next Monday. Audrey, what do you have for us? Yeah, so I've talked about it a few times now, but Real Housewives of Miami, if you are an Xfinity Rewards member, which you can become by saying Xfinity Rewards into your voice remote and signing up um, if you are a Comcast customer, um, we're doing a live stream with them. Um, three cast members, Gertie, Lisa, and Julia, and it's going to be focused on style goals. So we talked about Peacock goals, about how that can be like New Year's resolutions. So these three wonderful cast members of um, Housewives of Miami are going to be talking about their 2022 style goals. So that's everything from like entertaining at home um, to fashion and beauty and like health hacks and stuff like that. So they're going to talk about the big trends that they think are going to be popular for 2022 um, and basically how you can um, live like a housewife. So if you want to check that out, like I said, say, um, Xfinity Rewards, and that is on the 17th at 4 p.m. It's great. I could use a little zhuzhing of my of my style for the new year. I'm wearing Ooh. my my best Kevin's chili t-shirt. That's an office reference, <laughs> uh, especially for today for the Peacock show. And a hoodie, you know, but I could use a little more sequins. Uh, or, there you, you know, go. <laughs> Join something me. Something to... Something to accentuate my bust a little more in the new year. Maybe yeah. I can get some, yes. some tips. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> tips and tricks. We got them. Yeah. Uh, Scott Peacock has a pretty cool comedy series premiering on January 20th. And you're going to tell us about it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So have you ever like been telling a, like, a friend or a group of friends a story that's just like so crazy that happened to you, but you don't have the right vocabulary to be able to tell it like effectively um yes insert peacock's new television show true story which is basically like drunk history but it's crazy stories from the lives of everyday people that are like told and then reenacted by actors um it looks absolutely ridiculous and super fun and i kind of want to sign myself up for this so that i can tell some of the ridiculous stories that have happened to um us, particularly me and David, uh, maybe that one time we ran into Kim Petras in Atlantic City. Um, I feel like that would be a, a perfect occasion to kind of just maybe have Emma Roberts play me and David, who do we want for you? <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I mean, put me on the spot now. Who, who... Tori Spelling? <laughs> No, yeah, sure. Why not? Paris <laughs> Save me. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I feel like that would be perfect. Um, but yeah, this show looks super, super fun. So if you're a fan of drunk history, um, but you know, maybe don't are having a dry January, check out True Story. There you go. Uh, I, I think it sounds fun. And yeah, Audrey, do you have any thoughts on say. True Story? Oh, sorry. It looks sorry. really gonna... funny. That's it's drunk history for dry January. That's perfect. Yeah. I didn't, it yeah, is. that just came to my headline. head while I was. <laughs> what a genius. You hear that, Peacock? You hear that, Peacock? Take it. It's all yours. <laughs> That's why I get paid the big bucks, obviously. <laughs> well, um, but it's Ed uh... Helms of The Office, too, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, so really keeping it and, in the family. And the other, it's, it's what, Ran Randall? Randall Park. Randall Park yeah. from um, mm -hmm. from Fresh Off the Boat mm -hmm. and a bunch of other things. He's very funny. Yeah. They're going to be good together. Very good. Yeah. I added a whole lot to that. Uh, <laughs> but I'm about to add so much more because finally wrapping it up is the WWE Royal Rumble, which airs on Peacock on January 29th. It is my absolute favorite event of the year, more than WrestleMania, more than anything else, pr primarily because it almost always falls on my birthday or my birthday weekend, and I like do something around it. Typically, I just watch the Royal Rumble for my birthday. Um, but if you're unfamiliar with the Royal Rumble, the main attraction is a 30-man and 30-woman over-the-top battle royal, uh, two of them, one for each. Uh, the concept is simple. Two stars enter the ring. Every 90 seconds, a new star joins the match until all 30 stars have entered. The only way to eliminate an opponent is by throwing them over the top rope so that both feet hit the ground. 
The last man or the last woman standing gets a title shot of their choice at WrestleMania. This is basically how the main event for WrestleMania is set because they huh. always choose the world champion. Um, and only about uh, a dozen participants have been announced so far for the men's Royal Rumble match. But one of them is Johnny Knoxville, uh, who, is who is promoting his upcoming Jackass movie. It's typical that they have like a celebrity join. Um, there's always surprises, but like, you know, in the past, like uh, Drew Carey has been in, Pete Rose was in one year. I can't think of anything, anyone more recent than Drew Carey and Pete Rose. Um, but Johnny Knoxville is going to be in this uh, year's event. Um, but nearly 20 of the 30 participants have been announced for the Women's Royal Rumble, including a bunch of past stars like the Bella Twins, uh, Lita, Michelle McCool, Kelly Kelly, and Summer Rae, as well as current Impact Wrestling Knockouts champion Mickey James, which is a very rare cross-promotional stunt. Like, Mickey James works for another company, She's champion Ooh. there, and she will be in the Royal Rumble this year. WWF, or WWE, whew, don't sue me. Um, WWE <laughs> rarely does stuff like this, so it's really, really cool to see that. And there's lots of rumors that there will be other stars from other companies or like maybe one big surprise. Um, and so this WWE Premium event will also feature Brock Lesnar defending the WWE Championship against Bobby Lashley. Becky Lynch defending the Raw Women's Championship against Dewdrop. <laughs> it's a real wrestler. Yes, yes, and... Dewdrop. <laughs> <laughs> and Edge and his real life wife Beth Phoenix teaming up to take on The Miz and his real life wife Maurice. So wow. that is the Royal Rumble. I'm very, very excited, as you can see. I have one important question. Yeah. Is this when they say? Let's get ready to rumble. Isn't that they boxing? Don't because it is boxing. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate it. It should be for this. It should be. It's a lot of fun. And you know, it's one of those things like I will even say I've over the years I've had a lot of non-wrestling friends watch this because it's such a simple concept. One person in at a time, throw them over the top rope. You can make drinking games to it. You can like I always like put all the names into a hat and you can pick one and then you have like pick a roster of like five people out of a hat and the, those are the ones you want to root for. Like there's lots of ways you can gamify it. Don't you have a better chance of winning if you're the last person to enter? Like you sure logically, are. that would and make sense. Typically there are matches to determine who gets to enter in that 30th spot. Um, sometimes they like, it's, Everyone draws randomly, Allegedly. draw randomly, but, but, you know, <laughs> some, sometimes there's been times in the past where like people have been stuck at number one, like Vince McMahon made Stone Cold Steve Austin enter at number one as punishment so that he had no chance of winning. And of course he did, oh. or sometimes they game they game the system. So someone comes in at 30 cause they're more likely to win. But I think uh, if I recall correctly, the person who enters at number 28 has won more than anyone else over the years. Huh. How do I, I don't know how I know so much about the Royal Rumble. I, mean, I, I do. Because but, you're like the number one fan. It's really sad. So Royal Rumble, <laughs> check it out. Very excited for that. Anyone else got anything else before we wrap this up? Does it for me? Nope. Well, that will do it for today's show. Huge <laughs> thank you to Wolf Like Me stars Josh Gad and Isla Fisher for joining us today. And even bigger thanks to my fellow Xfinity editors, Audrey and Scott, for the spirited conversation. And breaking news, starting next week, What to Watch Live moves to Fridays at 1 p.m. Eastern. Scott and Audrey didn't even know this. No. <laughs> what a class. <laughs> Friday. <laughs> Starting next week, you can find us the same way you always do, but now on a more convenient Friday time slot at 1 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> you can plan your weekend watch list. We will be there to help you do it. Uh, if you want to check out the TV shows and movies we talked about today, get more of our entertainment recommendations, or watch us interview big celebrities, just say what to watch into your voice remote. My name is David. Thank you for joining us on What to Watch Live. Bye. Bye.
See ya.